Good afternoon, guys. Already run into a chance to use my circular saw. Um, I actually already used it once. If you look right up in here, I used that to rip my OSB to go in between my header. But I made a mistake. <laughs> a couple mistakes. If you look here, still getting used to the nail gun. The nail gun is sweet, but I'm still getting used to it and I got too close to the edge. I'll fix that in a minute. But my problem is my header ended up being too low. So my windows are kind of tricky. Obviously they're already in and they're encased in the cement. So I had to try, if you look right there, there's a gap. These windows actually can, the whole window can be lifted out, which is really handy. So I wanna, I wanna keep that ability if I can. So I wanted to bring my header down that have just enough for my trim where it's still, where, well, where it comes to about the middle of that. My problem is because I added this plate right here that I didn't mean to add, I'm about an inch and a half too low. Now, you can see the plumbing. This isn't structural at all. So I'm gonna try <laughs> to rip that header down and I'm hoping I can measure up an inch because I don't need to do the full inch and a half. Measure up an inch, rip it on this side, pull the wall out, measure up an inch, rip off that side, and hopefully it'll be close enough. So I actually have to do this window and this window. Um, but this is a six and a half inch blade, 18 volt Metabo. It will actually rip through that two by four and the OSB. It goes deeper than most, most six and a half inch circular saws will do. So hopefully that keeps me from having to do something crazy like, you know, put a beam up and chainsaw it because that was my next option to try to keep it straight. So we'll see how this goes. Hopefully it goes okay. I mean, if worse comes to worse, I rip some of it out and redo it, but I'm thinking oscillating tool, which I haven't used yet in the corners right there, go up and then circular saw. And hopefully between that and my oscillating tool, we can get this fixed. Now, this is the 18 volt oscillating tool. I haven't done a review on this yet, so I'm gonna kind of film one here. A lot of people were complaining about changing the blades on the old ones, so I'm gonna show you that here in a second. But here's your on off switch, and guys, this is actually crazy quiet. I mean, come on, does it get any quieter than that? So that is super sweet. And then the blade attachment's a little funky, but I actually really like it. Let me get my tripod here and I'll show you. So see if I can get this in the shot here. There's a handle right here that you pull up and that loosens it. And then right here, you just turn that guys. It comes right out. You put your new blade on. And is it a little funky? Yes, but it's it's not hard. That's it. So all these comments I've been seeing saying, it's really weird to change out. Is it really? So here's your speed adjustment. I guess this will make it louder. Let's see how loud it is on that. <laughs> it's still really quiet. Got your light on the front. And yeah, I wanna test it out here in just a little bit. So this is actually right about where I wanted my header to come out. So I got my laser level up there. And what I'm planning on doing is attaching a two by four across the opening here so I can set my circular saw on that and run it across. 
we'll see how that goes. And if any of you are looking for a laser level, they're actually fairly expensive if you go to like a Menards, a Home Depot, a Lowe's. I was able to get one that does 360 degrees. Now it's not the brightest of laser levels, but 360 degrees and it's a Bauer from Harbor Freight, 99 bucks. Okay, so it's cutting through it okay. When it stops, it's hitting nails, which I think that's a safety feature to keep from kicking back. So after just kind of backing up and going back forward, backing up and going forward, it's working. I ran out of battery, so I'm actually gonna put the 36 volt battery in there. Hopefully that gives me a little longer to cut. What a mess. Okay, so what I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna use the oscillating tool and cut up here and hopefully be able to uh, cut this, well, it's about an inch and a half off now. All right, so it is actually a few days later. Um, I didn't get to finish up that video quite how I wanted to, but I used that oscillating tool and was able, I cut through this one with the circular saw and then I was able to use the oscillating tool and trim off the back one. And that kept me from having to pull the whole wall down. Now, is this how I would wanna do it originally? No, but again, this is not a bearing wall. Um, it's just to hold drywall. There's going to be um, bulkheads frame that help hold it in place. That This is already overkill of a header for, I mean, there's no weight coming down on it. So trimming that is just the best option for me. 
and it's gonna work just fine, just fine. Now, if you can see behind me, I actually have another wall up here in the middle. It's where the closet's gonna be there. I've got walls up on both ends. But what I ran into is my cement is definitely not flat. And this, this is my first time doing a project like this. Um, and this is what a lot of us are doing. We're learning as we go. So I should have put my top plate and my bottom plate on the floor and measured up to the floor joist. What I did is I just measured up to the floor joist, not taking into account that my true to bottom plate is probably gonna be a little bit bigger than it should be. You know, as far as the size they tell you it's gonna be. And when I went to put the wall up, it, <laughs> it didn't fit. And I did not want to tear it all apart. Again, not a load bearing wall. So I got to use the oscillating tool again. And you can see right up there, I used it to notch where each of the floor joist was. Now again, if you're a framer or a builder, you're probably laughing at me and that's okay. Um, pretty good size mistake on my part. But again, guys, I have beat this thing and used it a ton. So figured I'd just kind of finish my review of it. I have used this for hours now. <laughs> I didn't want to, but sometimes it is what it is, guys. It is what it is. So I have used it to cut through two by four material repeatedly over and over again. And when you're going through a top plate, you know, three and a half inches of a two by four. So it has been put through the ringer. I have a few thoughts. One, it's very comfortable to hold and it actually keeps level pretty good. Once your blade doles, it's a little harder to keep it straight, but that thing does a really good job you know, from any angle, really, it just kind of wants to stay level on its own. That's really nice. It's not that loud. I mean, I wear ear protection for any tool I use, but it's really not that loud. Cordless, awesome, right? Now, if you're using an 18 volt, it is an 18 volt, but if you're using the two amp hour 18 volt, you're not going to get a ton of life out of that. So, I think I did one header two by four. So this is about a five foot window. So going, you know, kind of slowly through that. I think I did that on one of those batteries, but it, it killed it. So what I have found is that I really like using, again, multi-volt platform. I like using the 36 volt in it. It lasts a lot longer, gives you a longer life. So I think it's an amazing tool. I love it. It's way better than any oscillating tool I've ever used. It's got a great light. It's comfortable. It's powerful. It's quiet. Gets the job done. Hard jobs. I haven't used it for a little trim and stuff, but if you're going to use it for something heavier duty like this, it's going to handle trim just fine, guys. Tool change is not difficult. Um, the comments that say that, I don't understand that. Maybe this is an updated version of it because it is great. Would I suggest this to anyone? Yes, I would suggest it to everyone, honestly. Very good tool, very powerful. You also saw me using the circular saw. I love this thing. The depth of the cut on a six and a half inch blade is amazing. It's powerful enough to get the job done. I wouldn't avoid that either, especially for what I paid for it at 40 bucks. Thanks for checking out, guys. You'll see more of this project coming up. We'll talk to you later.